So listen, I think we can all agree that Manchester United are going through it this season. Now what I've noticed since watching Ten Hag recently, his team seems to do better when Ten Hag just lets himself go and does the weirdest tactical stuff. So what we're going to do today is we're going to take one part Ten Hag and we're going to take one part my messed up brain and we're going to come up with something that Man United probably shouldn't use but maybe they could. Now I want you to know this hurts, this hurts because I am a Man City fan. In a normal world, he would maybe use a 4-3-3 or even a 4-2-3-1 by pushing Bruno up. But that hasn't really worked, has it? In fact, the most impressive they've been and Fergie-esque was when they made that mad comeback against Liverpool in the FA Cup. So friends, this was the ideal opportunity to treat Football Manager like what it is. It's a game, so let's have a bit of fun. I had to look through my archives and noticed there was a load of tactics that I hadn't used in ages. I went to the ingeniously titled FM23 Tactics That Bang, scrolled on down, and I found the Nementia tactic. Here's the YouTube video for that. There's the Nementia, you can see how mad that is, but that won me the Champions League with Anderlecht. So, roll it back. So I loaded that in, that was my base point, so the team instructions will stay the same, but I just tweaked a few things, right? So I had a look at the team and I wanted Kobe Mainu to play instead of Casemiro. That poor lad is going to be the only central midfielder in this team. Nuts. So I thought, let's help him out and we'll have the right back, probably wan or Dalo, as an inverted wing back. So he'll jump in and bail him out a bit. The other three, they can stay the same. Now further up, I'm going to lose a striker and I'm going to put him as a winger and move the striker more infield. Now if I remember, the striker's got some key player instructions. Yes, he does mark specific position so he's going to mark the opposition right back and cover out there so in effect when we lose the ball he's a bit like that so those were the only changes i made i changed the role of the right fullback and i moved one of the strikers to winger and that was it totally normal tactic right so the first clutch of games i expressed carnage six four five four five six seven six but what we got was actually the opposite clean sheet after clean sheet after clean sheet and yes, that did include an away win at Liverpool. The holy grail in Football Manager. Signs were bizarrely good. I was going to make some transfers to help the team out, but I ended up not making any transfers. And the one area of concern is a bit like real life. This man's got a lot of work to do. But wait a minute. That's right, what we did was Anthony went to development and training and we retrained him to be a wing back at left back. And do you know what? When you look at his attributes... Save for his marking and a little bit of tackling, he could probably do it. So I had my backup left back and it was going to be Anthony. Good luck with that. So after those five straight clean sheets, our first defeat annoyingly came away at Forest. And that could have been avoided if Bruno hadn't missed a 95th minute penalty to draw it. But the bounce straight back with a thumping 4 0 win against Villa, and there's the formation down in the corner. And in the very next match, it continued. This move here must have had about 40, 50 passes. I featured it on my Patreon page, slicing teams up. Devastating Newcastle 6-0. Granted, they had 10 men. And if that wasn't impressive enough, Arsenal. Arteta's Arsenal came to Old Trafford. There goes the first, and we're going to need to speed things up. After that Erdegaard equaliser, the boys just got their flow. Arsenal could not deal with this murder ball concept. Slicing them open through the middle, time and time again. It could have been any score. We had two disallowed. I guess we'll take the final result. Which was a cool, cool 6-1. Very next match, we got pumped by Man City. I mean pumped. This tactic is not faultless. I need to think of an away version of it, perhaps. But it just shows how strong this tactic is, especially at home, because later in the season we played City again and we absolutely battered them. And this kind of hurt me, I won't lie. Finished up 4-0. Christmas came and we were still flying. The games we had lost, like this game at Tottenham, it was away from home, so maybe I need to think of an away version of Murder Ball. But that defeat to Tottenham was our last defeat for four months until Burnley randomly beat us in April. This included us doing the double over Liverpool, so just like real life, we're causing Liverpool problems. You probably notice most of the goals coming through the middle, because we do focus play through the middle, but when you've got all these beasts up here, why not? We didn't just pick on Liverpool. In the Champions League, we gave Barcelona a bit of a battering at home 3-1. They couldn't deal with a murder ball, and Rashford actually woke up. 
actually was pretty good in the Champions League. I expected a heavy defeat to Real Madrid, but we only just got knocked out. Two 1 0 wins by Madrid knocked us out of the Champions League. We went to Arsenal and yet again we beat them, this time with Mount scoring in that shadow striker role. That meant if we beat Everton, Manchester United would once again be top of the English tree. Murder ball, eh? Murder ball. So that's how it's finished. They have 92 points. I lost six matches. And by the way, all of those, I think, all of those were away from home. So maybe we can find an away version of Murder Ball that's not quite as mental. But 30 wins out of 38. And the most surprising thing for me from these matches was, yes, we were top scorers in the league along with Tottenham, but we had the second best defence as well. Only conceded 31. Who needs central midfielders, right? So a cracking season overall and they shared the goals out. Remember Fergie's team where they used to share goals out all over the midfield and strikers? Well, we've got Garnacho with 13, Mount 14, Fernandez top scorer with 22, Rashford got 19, goals all over the place. So there it is, that is Murder Ball and that is in the Patreon now for you guys. If you want to try something as stupid as this, I'll stick the player instructions on the end as well. It just shows though, you can do all sorts in this game. I still feel like the rules used make it make a little bit of sense. The one Basaka roll where he pops in there. When you're in game, you'll see he's next to Manu quite a lot of the time. And little things like this left-hand side shadow striker roll has got to stay wider on as well. So he spends a lot of the time over there. Kind of filling that gap. Does make sense. Still crazy though. So yeah, if he wants to save himself from the sack, just do that. <laughs>